This episode is dedicated to the memory of James Wood, better known as our good friend, Spade Ace. This is a presentation of RBT Entertainment. This isn't about the dead, it's about the living. It's about my mother. It's about my sister. It's about my wife. It's about the 14 years it took me to go from undesirable to un-goddamn deniable. You know, they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at Small Joe, and you can see that statement is not true. Because I'm better than you, and you know it. In the back, there are men and women, seasoned professionals, dues paid in full, gunning to be the best. I'll always light the way, and all you have to do is let me in. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. The cream of the crop! But it does it better. Hey, hi, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the WrestleCast, presented by RV10 Entertainment on Podomatic, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever else you may find this fine audio recording and live on RV10 Entertainment's official Twitch.tv channel, where we talk about professional wrestling, both in the mainstream and the independent scene. My name's Manny J, that is CWK. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another WrestleCast. And yeah, a bit of a somber way to start, but let's let's get back into a good mood. Let's get into the best of moods. Let's put smiles on the faces. We're having a good time tonight. No, we did that. Uh, we did we did a good two hours last night. Damn right, we're gonna do it another hour tonight. And of course, joining us as always to help us do that, Shin Tiger Curl. Oh shit, it's dim sum time. God damn right, it's dim sum time. Who? The and fuck? soda time, apparently. Ah, it's okay. Yep, uh, courtesy of co-worker Randy, thank you very much for this can of Pepsi Mango. Ooh, nice. Not a big mango fan myself, but hey, get in it when you get in. Hey, me neither, but then again, specialty sodas? I shouldn't be bitching. I got two cases of throwback in the garage. So, no, uh, no... <laughs> I am not dumping on that. I, I, I say enjoy that 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 enjoyable that enjoyably flavored soda. And Airball, I just got one thing to say to that. Ah. It's it is an acquired taste, to be fair. I mean it's not the not the greatest flavor of all time, but then again, you know what? I've tried uh Oh fuck, what was it called? Shit. I'm trying to remember now. It was uh Cinnamon, Coke cinnamon, or something cinnamon. I, I'm trying to remember now, but it was something cinnamon flavored. That does not sound good with soda. It was not. <laughs> it was, I mean, oh. it wasn't bad, but it did it, 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 no, it, it, it never again. Oh, Maddie, tell these people, what are we doing tonight? We're doing an hour. As always, Dynamite has, has been put uh, put on the Friday slot one more time, so we have that. Uh, we'll, we'll go over the NXT TakeOver card as per usual and uh, all that good stuff. And uh, we have news, and we got uh, 50 minutes-ish to do that. So we'll jump right into it. And for those wondering about Ace, don't worry. I got a special. I, I have thoughts. Uh, and I'll reserve them for close to the end of the show. Uh, so we'll, we gotta, we're gonna move on. Uh, take over there at uh, the C, uh, the 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 uh, Capital Wrestling Center, the Performance Center in Orlando. Uh, I don't think we're gonna do a preview, though. I will say this: 
Uh, this is a hell of a card. Uh, they have a six-man tag, winner takes all for both the North American and Tag Team Championship, Bronson Reed and MSK. They're defending against Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar, Joaquin Wild, and Paul and Raul Mendoza. I said Paul. That's not Paul. It's Raul Mendoza. Mendoza! Mendoza! Come on. Let's do it. Uh, Raquel Gonzalez defending the uh, women's championship against uh, Amber Moon. Uh, they, they, they had to go home. Sure, they had to go home angle. That was a thing. Well, ain't losing. Moving on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty much. Uh, Zia Lee versus Mercedes Martinez. Uh, they did a thing. Oh, how cute. NXT's trying to do Lucha Underground. Uh, that's cute. Interesting, but I don't really care. No. And in the main event, trust me, I'm going with this. Cameron Graham taking on LA Knight in a ladder match to determine the million dollar champion. Puts yes. the million dollar title on the on the cowboy, on the caveman cowboy. Hold on, there, dummy. You're the wrong kind of man to be answering that. Everyone knows that the new million dollar champion can only be the one and only L.A. Knight. I still think it should be Eli Drake. Him but, too, dummy. Yeah. Yeah. And in the official quote unquote main event, though, I, it's, we still, the three of us believe it should be the. Million Dollar Championship, of course. Karrion Cross taking on Kyle O'Reilly, taking on Adam Cole, talk, taking on John A. Gargano, taking on Pete Dunne in a five-way for the NXT title. Yes, a fatal five-way. <laughs> it's Brian Tate's favorite type of match. Well, all I care about is I, I want someone to kill Kyle O'Reilly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Who do, you, who do you who do you want to do? Who do you want? Why would you, okay? Who do you want to kill Kyle O'Reilly? Uh, I want Adam Cole, baby. Maybe, true, true. maybe. But Crunchy Kevin Crustenson should do it because simply because of his wardrobe choices. <laughs> like he, I can't believe I'm saying this. Kyle O'Reilly sucks now. They 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 tried to put they tried to put make him look fun cool and to quote George Carlin, O'Reilly, you ain't cool, you fucking shilly. And shilly ain't never been cool. Thank you. <laughs> hey, it's a good quote. It's a good quote. That it is. And uh, JC wants to see Pete Dunn win. I would not be too angry at that. You know what? You put the belt on anybody, but even Kyle O'Reilly, it's not a bad choice. It, this is literally a case of pick him. Though, personally, I think Man. it should go on Adam Cole because the whole thing of Adam Cole versus R William Regal again kind of works. It kind of works. Nah, they, they've built, they built, uh, built him up too strong to be as a champion to have him drop the belt this early. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. And it should be Cross versus Cole one-on-one. -on -one. Should. Are the only person I could ever see um, Crunchy dropping uh, dropping the belt to, and go with me on this, is Walter. I could see that, yeah. Once Walter Dude, eventually. even if he doesn't drop it, I'd love to see Walter, Walter versus Karrion Cross. That's a, that's a, that's a hoss fight right there. That is, that is the only option I could see of them dro ever dropping the belt, or anyone coming close to getting him, getting him to drop the belt, because... Kuki is too strong. He is booked too strong as NXT champion. For those wondering that that, that that misnaming Karrion Cross, that's been that's been around since the Impact days. For those for those curious, it's a good running gag. We're letting him do it anyway. Moving on. You were saying. All right. So I guess now we'll get to the official news of the week. Let's talk news. I guess that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of NXT, um. Triple H is trying to apparently do his best to get people to not watch it because oh, the media call the other day this. was that 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 was some collar tugging. Oh, oh. This, usually Triple H is in a good mood. He's answering questions, and th those were some softballs. It was still being sent. Oh, 
Oh, there are rumors. For... There are rumors floating around that the corporate restructuring and the releases are to tighten up to make WWE look as good as possible as a company to be sold to a multi-zillion dollar entity. And the big rumor is that they're going to do it for NBC. Now, there's a part of me that's like, come on, there's no, Vince would not sell. And then you look at it, everyone's saying, well, it's, mm -hmm. uh. and there is a sense of, a sense of people thinking, oh, he is, Triple H is not in a good mood. He's, he might be a little stressed. Hairball said, well, he's not wrong. The fans are over analyzing this shit. You're not, okay. He's not incorrect in his, in, in, in his way of thinking. We overanalyze everything. I mean, th this is this is us. This is me. I did that. We overanalyze everything, and we're not even trying to overanalyze anything. It, we're just us. But as a corporate guy, as a guy who's catering to the customer... You could think it. You're sure Shane ain't supposed to fucking say it. Yeah, as many people are like pointing out, this is kind of parallels his whole me and Mark are going to stop watching now. And promo. guess what? When he did that promo, we did four million people were watching. You want to know how many people are watching fucking now? Less than two million. Boom. Yeah. So yeah, people did stop watching and. Um, I think the biggest problem here is just how he went about the whole thing because he could have easily said, had the same message but just said it in a less douchey way. He's been good with words, especially on the media call. So this is definitely a departure. I, look, I'm not, a, I'm not the world's greatest expert on Triple H. That's Triple H and probably Stephanie McMahon. But something tells me something's up. To, to be that snippy, that uppity. Yeah, then when someone brought up the whole, hey, you guys going to do a whole, you know, Evolution 2, and he just snapped him like, no, we were not doing that ever again. Like, what? So he did that one in the bud. That's now, no, that's never, ever going to happen again. Evolution was a once-in-a-lifetime thing, never happening again. God damn it. Can't happen again. Can't happen again. No. Half the women's roster from that is either gone, retired, or baby making right now. now of course, I'm over. I'm all overstating it, but th 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 that's the truth. Yeah, and one of, the, one, out of that... the, one of the women le that left, they got released, is literally producing the NWA version of that pay per view. That's going to be. Well, that's going to be my next uh, point. The fact that Nikki is producing. Hey. You, you like that? You like that segue? Eh? Eh? Yeah, let's, let's all hop on the metal segue. Hell yeah. So yeah, Mickey James is producing an all-women's pair of for the National Wrestling Alliance, and she said that she's reaching out to as many people as possible to AEW, Ring of Honor. She wants all women possible to be involved. She was found. Oh, sorry. Was... Fucking Facebook Fucking popped up on me for some reason. Yeah. Keep going. Not like... That was it. Like she wants people from AEW, Ring of Honor, the Indies, everywhere she can uh, call up. She's calling if you're if you're people. a lady, if, if if your qualifications are our woman can wrestle and can wrestle good, she wants you on that show. Hey, Lufisto, we got a, we got a booking for you. Which means we're not going to see anyone from WWE. Why are we not surprised? Because the, the only woman I could see, uh, I could uh, um, just spitball it. Any woman I could see going in there would be Charlotte. And there is no damn way Vince is going to let Charlotte go into a tournament that he can't control and have her lose. <laughs> Not going to happen. Nope. By the way, um, someone on Twitter made this point about WWE is the fact that ever since Ronda Rousey left, they haven't really been trying with the women's division as much. It's been a shit show. It's a downward slide. It, it, it really does. You know what? I, I would I would argue, ever since Becky left, it's been a it's been a downward spiral. Yes, it was slow at first. Of course, when Ronda left, yeah, it was slow. But Becky was keeping the effect. The, Becky, along with the other four, uh, other three, four horsewomen, they were keep, keeping the division afloat. Becky's gone. Bailey is not present. 
Charlotte just came back and they're just trying to make her look like it's Charlotte's show and no one wants it wants it to be Charlotte's show. Hey, it's Charlotte's a shit gone, show. When Charlotte's gone, everyone should ask, where's Charlotte? And yeah, and of course, being, being honest, who really thinks Eva Marie's going to move any kind of needle? <laughs> No, this what? is literally Vince McMahon saying, this is literally the company going, well, we, we, it's still a little red. It's still good. It's, it's, it's not. Like, <sighs> UC says that SmackDown Women's Division is doing well. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, Sasha Banks. Yeah, the Women's uh, Division. Okay, how many, can you, can you honestly name the amount of people in that division right now? Let's name them. Bianca, Bo Bianca Belair, uh, Bailey, Sasha Banks. Uh, let's see, they got, Carmella, um, Natalia, and of course, the greatest female wrestler of all time. Who's Mina than Tamina? Woohoo! Hop on the train, baby! Okay, Mike, we discussed this. No. We, no. We already discussed this. We're dropping the <laughs> joke. <laughs> He's never going to let that go. But yeah, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're just going to leave that at the door. Leave that at the door. That's that's gone. But the bigger question is, how many potential challengers to Bianca Belair's title can you name on SmackDown? Uh, outside of Sasha and Bayley, uh, they only really got Carmella, and like they're going to have to build someone up fast outside of that. I don't trust them to, do, to build anybody up. I trust SmackDown more than I trust Raw. Still, it's still Which I know isn't much. I mean, I mean let, let, let's get back to the point I was trying to make. That division is fucking barren. And the tag team division? What tag team division? Seriously. I knew it was going to be a problem once they made the NXT women's tag belt. Like, well, there goes any sense of crossover and using the NXT talent to build up the tag division. And even NXT barely has a women's tag division. Yes. Yeah, Sometimes there's just too many belts. There should only be one set of women's tag belts defending across all three brands, and that way we can really build them up as the belts to go after. If you're going to introduce new belts, make sure you have a healthy division to build the belts around. And, you, you know, upkeep the, and keep the division up. Don't fucking dismantle it because you don't like tag teams all of a sudden. Yeah, Vince has never really liked tag teams, which is why he constantly breaks them up. And the women's tag team division is of no exception because every tag team has been broken up. Literally every single one. Let's move on because I'm now I'm salty now. One yeah. thing that'll make you not salty is the fact that the Impact World Title will be defended for the first time ever at Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida, tomorrow. As, as announced on uh, Impact Wrestling, as a matter of fact, we were live. We were a reaction. We are live reacting the episode as it aired, and that's what happened. And Don Callis was being a dick. I mean, Don Callis. So there was that. Yeah, I just realized something. If this is if, 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 tomorrow would be the first time the Impact World Title has been defended in front of a live audience of any kind. Well, is there going to be a live audience at Daily's Place? That's the question. Like, are they're probably? I'm willing to bet they're probably going to do like a live tape and then uh, you know live tape in front of the crowd after Dynamite tonight. More than likely, either that or what they could also do is do the whole gimmick where they have the wrestlers as fans again for that match. That could be it. Bigger crowd than they've done in uh, since the pandemic. Started. That'd be the be uh, the biggest crowd the Impact World Title has done since last time. Yeah, that end maybe just maybe when nobody's looking, Fuego Doso can enter the ring and get the sneak victory for the title. Come on, Fuego, you can do it. That's not right. If Fuego comes anywhere near the ring, my invisible hand is going to turn into the visible fist and knock that little son of a bitch out. <laughs> God damn. Didn't think Don Cows to get bound towards anyone, especially Fuego. Like Fuego. <laughs> All right, uh, so the biggest news of the week uh, right here is the fact that the newest signee to all the wrestling is none other than Andrade El Idolo. Happened last Friday. We were, I think all three of us were pleasantly surprised. Not very much so. 
And his mouthpiece is none other than the heat machine herself, Vicky Guerrero. You know, I can't believe people were actually shitting on that decision on Twitter and, and Facebook. I'm like, dude, she's the ultimate heat magnet. It's instant booze for a guy who wants to play a heel. It's a genius can, move. You can fry an entire bucket of KFC chicken with the amount of heat Vicky Guerrero generates. Also, one thing I was surprised by was how good his English was, because I was led to believe that it wasn't all that well. And we got to hear him speak English. He did it pretty well. And I actually think he could cut some decent promos. It is. It's. it's in, it has been proving over yeah, over his time with um, WWE. Not the best, but he still needs work. But still, if you're going to have a mouthpiece and you can't have Thea Trinidad, get one of the get an all time great in Vicky Guerrero. Although I do Makes think sense. that they should also. If they, I think that they should eventually pair him up with Selena De La Renta. I mean, if if she wants to move over to uh, to uh, AEW, yeah, very much so. Uh, that's I think like that that's the is, big thing right there. Yeah, I think that any company would be improved by her presence because she was an excellent mouthpiece for. She MLW. was a great. She was great. She just got replaced by the guy who probably did it better. <laughs> yeah, very few people are going to be better than Al Jefe. It's tough to top uh, El Jefe. El Jefe. Yeah, that's, now that's a, call it a missed opportunity. They should have had El Jefe be um, Andrade's mouthpiece. And New brings up, Vic Guerrero was the bane of our existence for 15 years. And you're welcome for that. Yes. Hello, Tony Khan. You already know who I am. I am El Jefe. And I have come here to AEW to offer you a unique opportunity. Look, I, I've already had Don Callis give me one of those. Uh, no, no, thanks. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> you are talking about that. My out, I'll do one hour for $350, no teeth. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> All right, so speaking of having some pleasurable experiences, last week we also saw the Bucks defeat Pac and Penta in quite a good match. That, and it looks like Pac was about to get the win, but then Brendan Cutler reluctantly smacked Pac in the leg with the camera. He did. Though, the, what do you mean by reluctantly? You could see in the uh, being the elite that he was like, "No, I don't want to do this. I do this, Pac. I'm sorry. Smack. I'm sorry, Pac. I'm sorry." And also, we're going to talk about how the the, the Dark Order almost recruited Billy Gunn. Well, they, 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 they were close. close. Then, they were stupid close. I guess he wasn't. A, he doesn't want to be in another orgy. Oh, I've been, eh, I know what, you I know, know at his is. age. I know what this is. I've been through it before. Never again. <laughs> I guess one click orgy was one too many. One, one too many. Uh. And we also had the DMD celebration of the AEW Women's World title with some Big Macs for everyone. And by everyone, I meant for Reba, for Tony, and her, and nobody else. And, of course, Nyla Rose was in the ring in the Parade of Geeks and said, well, I'm not a geek. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a destroyer. Fuck this tray of burgers. Still better than Fire and Flavor celebratory meal. You know, at the very least, the burgers me. were halfway decent this time. At least the food was food. <laughs> Does that mean that Brick Baker is blacker than Fire and Flavor? At this point, she's she is much black. She is blacker than black at this point. <laughs> I, I to me, what was missing from this segment was Nyla Rose laying out at least one of the jobbers. She needed to lay out at least one of them. Mm-hmm. Just come on, just she's. The native beast. Let her be a beast and never murder someone. Not just pop balloons. Hey, actually, Shin, you think you think Nyla's a Whataburger lady? I can kind of see it. Well, you can ask her on Twitter. She responds to fan questions. I think I'll ask her. I, I'm, part of me can see that she's certainly a Dairy Queen woman. Whataburger? Hmm. Definitely in a definitely a specialty burger lady at least. 
I do know that she is from DC, and I'm not sure if there are any Whataburgers there. Ooh, there probably more of a Shake Shack, but still. The point, the point I'm trying to make is she, she, she'll be like, she, she looks like the kind of person who knows what a good burger is, and McDonald's Big Macs are, are not really good burgers. Which is interesting because Big Macs are legitimately Britt Baker's favorite burgers. And how she got all those was because uh, McDonald's literally gave her 1,500 coupons for free burgers. It's true. She actually did this. This is proof. And I, if you actually look at the coupons, it says that they expire at the end of the year. So she has until January 1st, 2022 to use 1,500 coupons. Maybe I need maybe I need to slide into Miss Baker's DM. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh sure, get assaulted by Adam Cole Baby while you're at it. Yeah. Let's, let's, do you, you, you want to be a part of, of that infamous super kick party at the Bullet Club? Please. This is Chugs. He's gonna chugs it up. Oh no, no, no. He chugs up at you at Uno. He is not gonna chugs up fucking up your head. No, no, to, no, to be fair, he fucks up your teeth. Dr. Britt Baker fixes them, so it could be 50. It could be win-win. I have the, I have the perfect plan. He goes to super kick me. I throw a deck of Uno cards at me, and he somehow ends up super kicking. <laughs> he somehow ends up super kicking New Jack. Oh, no. But New no. Jack's dead. That's impossible. That's, yeah. how big, that's how big he chugs it up. <laughs> So what? He's like a new Jack zombie now. That's me. I didn't pick it up. Chugs did. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next thing. Um, oh, tonight God. we're going to see Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky take on Darby Allen in a mystery partner. Who is it going to be? I don't know. It, are we live tonight, or is it tape? It's live. Like all the Dynamite episodes Ooh. tonight are on um, the Fridays are live. And mm. there are rumors going around, rumors and innuendo that Alistair Black might be heading to AEW soon. I've seen. Uh, see, here's the thing: he's got his ninety days. He he's that's got. That's what a, I thought. You know, he's got the ninety day gimmick. That that's done. My bot, my know. bet, and it, it is an absolute freaking wild card, long shot, of snowballs chance in hell. Brian no. Danielson. No. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. Is it Ice Train? No, you're wrong. Totally wrong. Oh, I know it is. It's above average Mike Sanders. Please, you think he'd be he would catch it? You would think he would catch him anywhere near that loser, um, Darby Allen? Hell no. Loser. He's a former champion, and he's still SOL. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's your pick? My pick to be Darby Allen's. Tag team partner for tonight's match will be, of course, the legend himself, Bastion Booger. No, oh, God. He's dead. He, yeah. Don't underestimate what Bastion Booger will do for a good for a good Twinkie. Oh, He's no. Dead. He's literally dead. <laughs> he is dead, <laughs> buried a long time ago. Pick another guy. Fine, I guess. Okay, okay. Second legend. Very big guy. Guy who is a yeah, awesome. He's gone. Oh, who is it? Shin, we lost Shin. Oh, we lost Shin. Oh no. Oh Fuck. no. Of all the times. Oh, this internet crapped out. Damn it. Oh, he, we will attempt to get him back. Of course, uh, we will, we will a try. Noob has a good one. Hmm? Nick F and Gage. Maybe, maybe. Shall we um, try to move on? I mean, I guess uh, the next thing on my list is the fact that. Leo Rush has retired from wrestling this week after dealing with an injury, and the thing that really pushed him over the edge was the fact that his injury prevented him from holding his newborn son. That has really got him, and he decided to, because of that, to retire from pro wrestling, which I can definitely understand. 
Um, you know, you know I, I get the feeling the fact that he couldn't hold. I mean, it, th these things are temporary no matter what happens, but one cannot blame him. I, I can't blame him. I can't. Especially because, you know, you are sometimes one bad injury away from never being able to use that period. Yeah. And so, we, uh, he'll, he'll eventually recover and get to hold this kid, but one one has one has to re if one has to reevaluate his his priorities i can't knock him for that and props to tony khan for being very understanding about it you know he's he didn't seem vindictive at all he's no. okay we we're happy to that we gave him this opportunity and i honestly do hope that you know whatever his career is going to be going forward that he does well and i know that he's got his hip hop stuff going on so hopefully that takes off and you know what? The wrestling business will be for will be forgiving. He got one last good pop at Double or Nothing. He I may have that. he may have injured himself in the process, but if I'm Leo Rush, I'm going. You know what? I might have hurt myself. Not a bad way to go out though. That pop in front of a crowd sold out. Could have been worse. And this is uh, next one is straight from Fightful. This is breaking news. Mm -hmm. According to uh, Sean Ross Sapp, NXT wants Samoa Joe back. <laughs> I thought that was rumor. Oh, God. Oh. Here from Sean Ross Sapp himself. Fight full select. Uh, you fucking hypocrites. You know you fucked up. Yeah, it's just like, I've been seeing like him and Aleister Black are apparently wanted back in WWE, which I'm thinking... Why'd you fire them? Seriously. Like they were like, right there. Joe is literally on comms for WrestleMania. You let him go weeks later. Alistair Black, you're in the middle of building his ass back up, you dumb fucks. See, this is why we don't watch your shit anymore. Because you can you can't trust them. You can't trust them with consistency. Not anymore. Not even NXT. Like it just feels like, okay, we're getting invested, we're getting invested, and they're gone. No fucking wonder Triple H is frustrated on the media calls. He doesn't know what the fuck he's plugging anymore. Eesh. Anyway, yeah, I, I know you want to stretch it, but I, we don't have time, dude. We got to move on. Well, that's all I have. Really? That's it? I was thinking that with Shin here, we could stretch this stuff long enough, but... Unfortunately, he left the building on, on prematurely. Oh, Mike Shell, WWE is a used car salesman of wrestling. A <laughs> little bit, yeah, a little bit. Makes sense. Also, uh, we haven't seen Finn Bauer in a while. Uh, what's he up to? Anyone know? Anyone? Huh. Finn, are you out there? Anybody? He's he's off. He's off the air. He is. He cannot hear us. No, Finn. Finn Balor. Fellow Finn Balor. Balor. Yeah, where is he? Balor. Balor. And uh, JC brings up uh, Kenny's injuries. Yeah, according to Dave Meltzer, Kenny's dealing with several injuries. I don't see him retiring quite yet, but I do see him after All Out, and he drops his title to Hangman, at least taking a break. I mean, that makes sense. And Dave Meltzer is definitely a reliable source in this stuff because he's pretty well, – I would imagine he's relatively well, tight. More reliable than not, let's be fair. Yeah, yeah. I don't, Like I said, I don't see him retiring per se, but I can see him taking a break because hearing about some of the injuries that he has, like to his tailbone, and he's got a hernia, and he's been dealing with a stomach illness, it's like, Jesus Christ. Oh, well. uh, it looks like T. It looks like Shin is going to attempt to log on again. We just saw him back online. We'll give him a minute to get uh, settled back in here. All right, Shin. All right, Shin. You were trying to troll us, and it broke your internet. What the hell happened? It was di Discord. I don't know what it is. It just stopped. All right, so. Your pick for Darby Allen's partner tonight against Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page is. I originally was going to go with the goon, but then I learned the goon was unavailable. Ah. So I'm going with the obvious pick. Skinner! <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. Isn't he working with, uh, with, with, uh, with WWE still? 
or they got fucking cut again. It might turn to get knocked off. Oh god I damn it! God oh, damn it! Discord, you why'd you cut off? They were talking and I couldn't hear. Them. Anyway, I thought Skinner was working with WWE. Nah, he he came back. He had to. He he, was, he decided that he wanted to work someplace where he can actually chew, chew chewing. Tobacco. Ah. So, uh, Shin, what are your thoughts on Leo Rush retiring? Well, he retired before, but this time. Considering his his answers and his response to it, I'd say if, if he wants to spend more time with his family, I can totally understand that. Is it, it, I said it before. I said it earlier. You know, you got an injury, fine, but that last match, that pop, and all that stuff. If your priority, if you need to reevaluate your priorities, I'm not going to dump on that. I can't dunk on that. You 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 know, tough one. By the way, I got some breaking news while we're waiting for stuff to happen. Or that, uh, Shin. I want to know your thoughts on this. According to Fightful, NXT wants Samoa Joe back. They're not going to get him back. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to be a answer. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, any more news? Uh, no, nice. we got something. Oh. Yeah. I got, I got something I could share right now. Breaking news from Game Changer Wrestling. Nick Gage just invaded uh, Kurt Macardona's major wrestling fed. He's got his live event at Jimmy Seafood. Home G GCW Homecoming one, GCW World Title. Nick Gage, Matt Cardona. Yeah. By the way, we need to talk about this. So last week, there was a hooded figure. Yeah, that was doing the Moxie movement. Gave the the whole DDT gimmick to Nick Gage. Took off the hood. It was Matt Cardona, and he was in full heel mode. And then he was he everywhere. He drank up that heat. Good on Matt Cardona. Showing showing you what, what the WWE missed out on. He got even more heat by people that got worked by him. I'm going, oh, Nick Gage said he was locked up, but I was locked up for 10 years in WWE. So the people got hooked to like, how dare you? You got paid. Like, and you got worked. Yup. And we're all sitting here going, yeah, this is going to be awesome. Like, unchained, uncentered, Mac, Zach fucking Ryder versus Nick fucking Cage. Or Nick Gage. I, 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 I keep mixing up the two letters there. Sure. Dude. He's not, sure, sure Matt Cardona is not fighting Nicholas Cage. Nick, 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 fucking Gage. Okay, Nick, fucking Cage. Okay. God damn it! One slip of my tongue, and now we got a new running gag. Great. I'm the king of hardcore. Deathmatch king, right here. <laughs> Mess you up, real bad, man. Yeah. You got anything else, Shen? Uh, as far as, as far as Nick Cage impressions, no. As far as news, I got a bit. All right, All right cool. what you got? Uh, recently, um, on once again on oral sessions, and Renee Briquet interviewed recent signee to AEW, one Mark Henry. Oh, very nice. Oh, yeah, you brought this up before we went live. That you have a bit to say. Yeah, you, you want something. to bring that up? Actually, we'll bring it up, brother. In the clip I saw of him, he detailed exactly why he left the um, WWE, as well as some details about him that I didn't really know, such as the fact that um, the reason he left was because he wanted to do more with the WWE behind the scenes, you know, being as a writer or a booker or talent scout or whatever. He, he said he didn't feel right just taking money and just them using his name because he feels his name has a lot, carries a lot of weight in professional wrestling. And he wanted to be paid for it because he's been doing this for a long time for free. Like, like he was the one who brought Daniel Bryan into the WWE. Yep, Daniel yeah. Bryan, uh, Mark Henry, Bianca Belair. Yeah, he said he, he even did, went into detail about how he had to lie to Johnny Ace about Daniel Bryan just for the so they could actually get a look at him. Cause yeah, because Johnny Ace is very much a bodybuilder. So he's like, we need the big bodybuilder men and the bikini women. Fucking douchebags! So I got a job in a high position again. Yeah, and 
Mark said that um, he saw Daniel wrestle some guy. He doesn't remember who. And he says that he said he made the other guy look great. So he hit him up on social media, said he was there, and he said, I watched you wrestle such and such. And Brian said, oh, sorry, that wasn't one of my best matches. I'm sorry that you have to see that. And so <laughs> he told um, Johnny Ace about him, and he said, so how big is he? And he says, oh, uh, Brian Danielson's like 6'2", 6'3", 250 pounds. Guy stacked. And that's the only way they got him in the door because of Mark Henry. He wasn't, he was, they didn't, weren't paying him to do it. He just did it, you know, because he loved the business. And Mark said he wanted to do, he really wanted to do more because as far as people go in the WWE, he watches more wrestling than, than any, pretty much anyone in the entire company. And yeah. And his taunt scouting, like I said, really paid off. Well, like I said, uh, Bianca Belair and Braun Strowman were both Mark Henry's picks. Mm-hmm. He's he got said, a keen eye for talent. And he said pretty much that he, he watches 16 hours of wrestling per week. That's that's pretty good amount. That's definitely more than me. This guy definitely has a love for wrestling. And I'm really happy that he's going to be a part of AEW because if they can have somebody scouting talent, then that's going to take some load off of you know, the EVP shoulders. So that's only a positive, really. So um, he goes on to say that um, when he asked this, um, he got uh, Johnny Ace got back with him around the time they were first laying people off for COVID. And he was expecting to get laid off, but he never did. But when he asked if he wanted, if he could do more in an official capacity, they never got back to him. And he kind of figured, you know, that's just going to be, he's not going to be able to be able Your to loss, do. someone else's company's gain. So he was able to, he contacted Tony and apparently him and Tony Khan have been friends for like decades for a long, long time because he used to um, watch the um, Jaguars um, practice in Jacksonville and he'd see Tony Khan a lot. And then since Tony Khan is an obvious wrestling fan, the two of them would just spend hours just talking about wrestling and shooting the shit. So it was pretty easy for him to um, get in contact with TK. Just let everyone know, despite Tony Khan's youthful exterior, the guy used to go to the old school ECW shows back in the nineties. Yep, that's how hardcore fan Tony Khan is. So I have no doubt that I'm not really surprised that he's also friends with Mark Henry because that feels like something Tony Khan would do. And um, as for what his position in the company is, he simply said, "Be Mark Henry." Like he does, in his own words, he doesn't have a set position. He's just there for whatever they need him to be. If they need him for a booker or as a writer or as talent co- or as a talent scout or a talent coach, he'll he'll do to do it. They just he just wants to use his wealth of experience to help te- to help um, AEW grow. And he said that there's nothing wrong with AEW. They just need to um, tighten the screw in his own words. So he that's what he's there for. He's he's them. he's there to contribute. And I liken this bit like like Michael Jackson's off the wall. Uh, a lot of people don't know about his first ever Saint solo album off the wall and even though it produced some great hits like Don't Stop Till You Get Enough and Rock With You it it, it was a nascent album that allowed him to transition between uh, Michael Jackson of the Jackson 5 to Michael Jackson the Thriller off the wall was good it just he found his sound but he just needed to fine tune it right now AEW is off the wall they haven't reached Thriller yet. They have the potential to reach Thriller. They just need to find they need to fine tune what's already good, and that's what Mark Henry is going to be doing. He and he's just going to help them get to to just shave off the rough edges and get a little bit better. And I cannot wait to see what that's going to look like because and look at that behind the scenes stuff. Arn Anderson, Dean Malenko, Mark Henry staying in a certain capacity, Jerry Lynn, Christopher Daniels. Big show. Big show. Jake, Jake Roberts. Jay. That wealth of experience, yeah, some of it's on screen, so most of it's off, but th- th- they have the ingredients. And Mark knows this. And he, and in Mark's eyes, if you're over, you're over. He'll only allow you to improve. He doesn't want to change anyone's character. Like he said that if he was working with Orange Cassidy, he wouldn't change a thing about Orange Cassidy, but he would help him refine who Orange Cassidy is so he can be better than he than to be the best version of orange cassidy can it can possibly be he doesn't care who's over or who's 
or how they're over. He just wants to help them be better. Which is really refreshing here because after years and years and years of hearing about WWE's backstage attitude and how you had to, you know, step over these landmine politics and just uh, just feels so dreadful backstage now to hear all these stories of now Mark Henry there and he's just going to help them out with all of his experience he's following. It, it feels like he's, just judging by the tone of you telling it, it sounds like he's really happy. He's yeah, happy he to be contributing happy. at this point. He's very happy to be doing this. It, and he was even, even better that he's working with his best friend, with, with Paul White. And he, and he and, and and Paul has even said several times that Mark has a great mind for business, but WWE just never let him really show I think it, I think I, WWE doesn't expect him to be that smart about the business because of how late of a bloomer he was to getting good in the ring. But he really does have a good mind for wrestling. Just to let you know, during his matches and entrances, those camera angles were all his idea. Any bit of cinematography you see in his matches that look good, that is 100% pure Mark Henry. By he the way, went- for those wondering, that that shot of him entering the arena with the, with the camera at his back, blocking the entire entranceway, Mark Henry's uh, yeah. Because this guy studied film, and he was like, why don't I use some of these film techniques and put them into my entrances and make them part of my matches to make them look cooler? And I'm like, I'm listening to all this. I'm like, this guy's a fucking genius. Why are they not using him? to? I stopped caring about WWE a long time ago. When, when you, you, At this point... I'm numb. I'm still numb over yeah. over the last few weeks. So the, the, the over the last few days, but yeah. And Mark Henry says that he watches. He 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 doesn't just watch the mainstream stuff. He watches indie promotions, and he said that he didn't come up in indies, but he appreciates what they go through, and he has a, va- a vast respect for indies and indie promotions. He watches it all, including New Japan. So the major. So from this short interview. This is a major get for um for a not in the sense of Mark Re- Mark Henry's in ring work. I'm not saying I'm going to see him in wrestle, but just his mind and his understanding of the business. Yeah, this yeah. might low key be one of their best signings. And the, the fact that WWE did not want to take advantage of this man's understanding of ring psychology and 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 understanding of pro wrestling as a whole, not just what the WWE creates. This might be, above all else, the, the the biggest missed opportunity that WWE has ever had. I'm about to make. I'm about to say something really bold, and some of you might say it's stupid. And who knows? It might be. But my prediction is, within the next five years, count them five years, Dynamite will be getting higher ratings than Raw. They're they're goddamn close. They're extremely close now. That's why I said within the next five years. It'll happen if they keep on the trajectory they're on, and they don't go off the walls with any sort of nonsense. They don't go and pull a TNA. They'll be fine, and them and they'll be beating Raw within the next five years. I'm I'm making that claim right now. Yep. Uh, All right, we got to move on, boys. We got to do winners and losers. I don't want to pay tribute to Mark to our good buddy here. Uh, let's do what. Let's do. I'll let you guys do both winners and losers, and uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll go from there. Okay. All right, first off, Shin, do you have a D-Cell battery award? Oh, I got a D-Cell battery award, and that goes to, unfortunately, Booker T. Ooh, what the fuck did he do? Specifically, after the whole after the, the whole um, bunch of guys got released last week, he said on his podcast that um, the reason why Aleister Black was released was because he wasn't unique enough. Bullshit. Yeah, as, as should point out, yeah, he's just some guy who sort of blends into the background, doesn't he? You know, a guy, you know, with satanic tattoos, fucking mohawk hair, kicks like with Zen type accuracy. Yep. So, yeah, he completely. Yeah, he's 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 just like um. Yeah, he's just like Elias. I, I couldn't tell the difference between the two of them. But yeah, Booker T, god damn it, it's hard to defend you sometimes, boy. Just <sighs> stupid. Uh, as for my overall losers, WWE for that, well, everyone's talking about it. That whole <sighs> Alexa Bliss, Shayna Baszler thing, just what, what the fuck were they thinking? 
just what the actual let's take the toughest person in our women's division and have her scream like a little child for a doll yep and my only other loser is um sad to say hit row Uh, oh what's wrong with hit row just have the other guys do something other than just walk around acting tough. If they say they're going after the tag team titles, actually have a fucking match to show me how good you are in the ring. Right now, it's just a just three people talking about how what they're going to do and Swerve being Swerve. That's it, it. It's just not working for me. It's just not working for me. And those are my losers. All right, uh, my, I only have one loser this week, and that is. Papa H for that media call. What happened? What what's wrong? It, 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 come on. What I, happened? Yeah, usually he handles these media calls so much better. And that's all I have for my losers. All right, Shin, we are winner. Winners, uh, AW for signing Andrade. That was a hell of a debut. Uh looking forward to seeing what he can do. Um uh, Mark Henry. For that interview he did with Renee, very insightful, very, very knowledgeable from what I can, what I can see. And um, Cameron Grimes versus L.A. Knight for the million-dollar title. That, that, that's the only match I really care about on um, TakeOver In Your House. Looking forward to that. I'm done. Uh, for me, it's Cameron Grimes for creating one of the more interesting characters in WWE. It's something that could have been complete garbage, but he made it gold. So congrats to you, sir. And, of course, to Mark Henry for being able to contribute to pro wrestling in the way he would love to the most. So the rest of that. And with that, we hand things over to Matty J. All right. Now, for those wondering for my losers, uh, Triple H and WWE for the aforementioned reasons. And as far I do not have, a, I, AEW would have a winner this week and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, I got, I got about what, how much time? About five minutes? Just about? Yeah. All right. So minutes, you yeah, saw the post. Sorry? You got 10 minutes. Yeah, but we with the transition and all that stuff. Um, obviously, as many of you have no uh, have found out, of course, I've posted about this as well. We uh, we at RVT Entertainment lost uh, James Wood, aka Spade Ace, as you saw at the top of the program, and uh, and this is, this is tougher than I thought. You know, Easy Post t- tweeted a while a while ago today uh that we are forever the four horsemen of the uh, of uh, rvt of, of the of toku riffing and uh you know with a lot of people say well you guys are mostly online you can't be friends and all that stuff and i'm sorry you you, you my cousin got married back in 2010 i want to say his best man, they met over playing Warcraft. So, and they are truly best friends, good friends all the, to this day, to my knowledge anyway. You, you can't tell me that I'm not supposed to feel any emotion right now. I, I, I'm still numb about it. So for those wondering if you are listening to this, uh, he had a, uh, there's a video explaining briefly, uh, that was worded by, uh, the shades, uh, last night explaining what had happened, how he got hospitalized over a diabetic attack and, uh, things seemed to be going well and then they weren't and, they had to pull the plug last night. I'm still heartbroken over it. You know, we only meet once, maybe twice a week, but it's it feels like it's every day. And I never in in the million in a million years thought the last time we would be together would be, you know, in Orlando in twenty uh, January twenty twenty and. Uh, we're we're you know we're we're geeking out over over seeing the stage for a, a awesome games done quick and dreaming of being on that uh, that on that backup couch. We got to be on that backup couch so many times. 
including off a block. That was that was a trip. That was that was one of the coolest things in the world. And of course, summer games done quick is coming up uh, at the beginning of the month next month. I uh, I I I I don't know. I'm going to get through that now. Like, I'm going to watch it like I usually do, but there's going to be a nagging part of my brain going, my God, if only we could be on a call together, John, James, and I, and just marking out over that. I'm obviously not as eloquent as as most other people are, and I'm not as talented as you saw the picture. I, I had to give credit to the uh, to the artist. How the hell we're gonna do Toka riffs next weekend is is beyond me. But uh, the show will go on, and we will obviously dedicate it to his memory. I uh, I knew how I, when I laid out this this uh, the, this this show tonight that I knew I was gonna give myself some time to this, and I I thought in the thirty six hours since I knew things were going downhill, I was gonna have like. I thought I was gonna have more words, but 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 I don't. This this community this 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 server lost a true hero, one of the funniest men that's ever stepped into this server. Metricon lost one of its great great show performers and put together people. And John, Easy, and I lost a, a, a true friend. I would come up with better ways to, you know, verbalize that, but that's how I truly feel. Life is going to truly suck without him. And one thing that Easy pointed out uh, last night was the fact that this wasn't too long after losing Cisco. Two or three years ago, almost. Yeah. And, you know, 2018, 2019, and... Gonna miss the both of them. I miss both of them. If you guys want to plug, go ahead. I, I, you, you go ahead. I ain't nothing to say. Just, just, just take your time. It, it, it is gonna hurt for a while, speaking from experience, but... At least, at least you have the pleasure of knowing them. I didn't get a chance to, unfortunately, and I kind of wish I did for speaking from how you guys speak of them. So just remember the good times and just be glad you, that you knew them. I, I, had the ple- I had the pleasure and privilege of having all four of my grandparents and losing each and every one of them hurt, and they hurt just as bad. And this just hurts as bad, if not worse. And that, that, that's the worst part of it, is not being able to fly down on a whim and just say, no WrestleCast, I'm going to Tampa to be with the people I need to be with. That's, you know, that's the one thing that sucks about it. Anyway, uh, I, I'd keep going, but uh, we got a few minutes left here. And I, uh, I, I guess I'll unplug. Uh, fuck. Yeah. I was going to break down. Uh, you know what? We'll, we'll keep it simple. Of course, uh, Shin Tiger Curl's uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Maxicorn. And uh, TWK's Patreon, patreon.com slash TWK Reviews. Of course, I have my oh. PayPal uh, uh, tip jar, paypal.me slash uh If you could find the GoFundMe there, uh, go to use the funds to take care of the, uh, the, the, the ceremony, the memorial services, and all that stuff. And any uh, leftover money will be donated to, I, I forget the... Uh, the Name, but it will be towards ju- the research of juvenile di- diabetes, and it's that's it's obviously a worth worthy cause. Um, there is one thing that I did earlier this week that um I was mean to plug, but I'm uh, I did a actually started my own uh, solo podcast for video games. And, so you, uh, you should check that out. Yep, uh, we'll we'll give it a proper plug next week for sure. Yep, yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> I, I hopefully uh, you guys uh, next week enjoy that because uh, 
I wasn't expecting to do an hour long fucking review on Ocarina of Time. <laughs> also, um, if there's one thing, um, Spades, if you're somehow listening to this, if there's one thing I know he would appreciate is this. Naruto is still better than Bleach. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of our uh, running gags on our tsunami calls. Uh, we're we're done here. We got we got to head out. So on behalf of everybody here, uh, this is Matty J. Uh, on behalf uh, and in honor of Spade Ace, asking what color is your D bun today? And it's blue for us. We'll see you now, folks, next week. Enjoy Dynamite. Until then, bye, everybody. Bye. And speaking of illegal moves, you know who else isn't on this tape from WrestleManias 3 and 4? Guys like King Kong Bundy, Junkyard Dog, Rowdy Roddy Piper, Cowboy Bob Orton, Nikolai Volkov, and one of my favorite heels of all time, how the hell do you leave this guy off the tape? The Iron Sheik? Fuck, you fucking spoon new one! You cheap juice son of a bitch! Find the fantasy and the favorite game! How you say these things about the Final Fantasy? You used to be fun, this boonie one. You used to have a schedule at least the video. You used to have the rest of wrestle. Now where is the video? Now you make the rest of stupid shit. You got to do the counter monkey. Now you do this fucking board game. Now you do the Final Fantasy. Now you do the shitty video series. Bring it back in wrestle wrestle or I put you in the camera clutch and break your back and make you handle and fuck your ass!